Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, this is gonna be part two about this cheap Amazon anvil that you can find online. You can find this anvil in both places. You can find it in eBay and you can also find it over on Amazon. I'm sure there's probably a tons of other websites that sell it too. Uh, it's basically the same product. This here is, I don't, I still don't know how to pronounce the name of this, but it is A-C-C-I-A-I-O. Um, and it's a 30 kilogram and or 66 pound anvil. Now, again, this is a cheap option for somebody who's just getting started. And I've already made a unboxing and a first impressions video. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link to it at the end of this video so you can go watch that. Or I'll also put it in a card to where you can, you know, go click off, go check out that video and then come back to this one because this is just a continuation on that. So what did I get into the other video? What I didn't get into the other video is things like rebound, um, you know, sound, things like that. Um, and <coughs> I, I didn't do that because I wasn't set up for it just yet. I wanted to be a little more set up. I have this sitting on top of my 465 pound North German Pettinghaus anvil. So it's just sitting up here right now. And it's a pretty stout little booger. The base is pretty solid, um, you know, as far as stable. So it doesn't rock around a whole lot, so I can give them some credit to that. It's really good. But the main purpose of this video is to see how well it holds up to operations like forging. Now, I've already done a little bit of forging on the surface of this anvil, and I can tell you right straight away that the anvil is a little bit on the soft side. So it's not as soft as say something like a Harbor Freight anvil would be, but it is on the softer side of things. So this is not a super hard anvil, which is probably good if you're just starting out and you're a beginner. So, um, you know, don't knock it too much for that. Again, this is a beginner style anvil. Part three of this little video series around this anvil, I'm going to be showing you how I would dress this up in order to put it in use in the professional shop. As mentioned in the other video, the, the face of it's already really clean and shiny, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, the edges may need just a little bit of dressing because they're fairly sharp, so I put a small radius, and I do mean small, anywhere from about an eighth inch to sixteenth inch radius on it. I like really sharp edges, but you can do what you want with yours. Um, but, and then we'll dress out the horn as well. But in this video, we'll test out the ringing of the anvil and a little bit of that rebound. And I'll do the rebound test with the ball bearing. <coughs> it's sitting on my table in, in the shop, the other end of the shop, so it doesn't have any actual mass underneath it. So you can kind of get more of a feel of what the anvil actually reacts like. So I'll put up a little B-roll of that now while I get some metal hot. We'll get some metal hot here and then I will bring you in a little bit closer and we'll do some forging and see how this face holds up. So first things first here, we're gonna go ahead and do a cut test on the edge since the edge is so sharp and we're gonna test the edge holding capabilities of the anvil. See how well the anvil's edge holds up. Again, it's not bolted down, so. So, so far, so good. That edge actually held up surprisingly well. That's pretty good. As you can tell, it's quite loud. Go ahead and heat that up. Real quick about silencing this anvil, I'm gonna go into a video in depth about this. Don't you worry. There's a good Roy Rant video coming out uh, about this particular thing. But I'm gonna show you how, with just a simple Harbor Freight magnet, we can change the tune of this anvil completely. So I'm gonna hammer on the face. So 
So it's all about finding the harmonic spot on your anvil in order to silence it. I'm just using just a magnet to stick it on there, but if I were to put the magnet somewhere else, doesn't really work. But I found the right spot and it really quiets it down. All right, so we got that set down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick a magnet on this so this way it's not so loud for the rest of the video. And we'll just do a little bit more forging. So it's performing surprisingly well. Now I had a miss blow right here at the edge where the hammer actually hit the edge of the anvil and there is a little bit of a scallop or a bump there. Like I said, this is a softer anvil. Also where I've been hitting with the hammer, you can feel some of the scalloping or dents, if you will, from the hammer impacting the surface on like a corner or whatever. It is my assumption, <coughs> kind of like my Harbor Freight anvil, my Harbor Freight anvil deformed like that quite a bit until I had work hardened the face sufficiently. Now this is supposed to be of a high quality cast steel versus cast iron. Um, right now I have no doubt about that, that it is a cast steel and not just a cast iron. So, so you know, we're good there. With it being a, a cast steel, it should work harden a lot quicker. And then you can come back through and kind of sand off any sort of lumpy bumpies you have. You know, just kind of re just sand with a flat disc most of your little lumpy bumpies out of there and get it back to that kind of original finish. And that surface should harden up quite a bit. Again, you have to remember this is a cheap anvil. I believe that they're right around that $130 to $150 range is what you can find them for. Sometimes you can find them on sale, so that's good. But right now, so far, liking it, it's working pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and test the horn. I'll pull this back. We're gonna go ahead and hammer on the horn. Now, you'll see quite a bit of texture. That's gonna be in the cleanup video of this, um, you know, anvil review here of this thing. And I'll show you how to do that and dress your edges. But we're gonna test the horn to draw out a little bit of stock. Once this piece is hot, I'll be right back with you. Piece is good and hot. Let's go ahead and hammer on the horn here. So you will definitely, you'll definitely want to bolt this little booger down. As the mass of my hammer and the amount of hitting energy you're putting into it. You know, this is a lever now at this point, so so that's not so good. You wouldn't want to take and push that too much further. You wouldn't want this to be unstable while working on it, uh, but the horn of the anvil acts as an anvil horn should. It allows you to form things round. So um, yeah, so that's a plus. It works good for that its intended purpose. It didn't snap off instantly. So that's good. And then you can still dress stuff up with it. Um, good and solid all the way through. So that is the most worst forging I think I've ever done <laughs> since I, since I started forging, I guess. Um, <laughs> that's, that's why it's important to mount these good and solid. So my suggestion for this anvil, this small anvil, if you go pick yourself up one, is to mount it to a good solid heavy block of wood and or build a good steel stand or base for. If you need help on drawings for that, the type of stand that I built for myself, I do have those over at blacksmithpdfs.com. You can go check those out for yourself. Um, I've got like a blueprint there that you guys can pick up on my anvil stand build and you can just adjust it to the size and the height for yourself. 
uh, but it gives you kind of some parameters to start with. A pretty good deal in my opinion. But then again, I'm going to be biased, so don't listen to Roy. All right, so here we go. Yeah. So will it walk and talk like an anvil? Well, ladies and gents, I believe it will. I think it's great. I think it's a pretty great anvil for the price and for the money. Like I said, if you didn't see the original um, video that I had on it, I would suggest that you do so. It, my first impressions video, it kind of helps you set up your expectations for what you'd be getting. Also, if you're interested in getting one of these anvils, I'll link that up down in the description down below. Be sure to go check that out. Those are affiliate links, so they do go to help support the channel at no additional cost to you. Uh, just, just so you know, that's what those are there for. But you can at least go and read up on them anyhow and uh, see if it's right for you. But as far as a good anvil for, for forging, I think it'll do the job. It, it'll do the job most excellently, I think. Um, you will want to get your invest in a heavy duty magnet of some kind to throw on there. To kill that ring, um, you don't want to go deaf <laughs> at an early age, so uh, definitely do that. And then set your expectations for what this anvil is. This anvil is a great starter anvil, and it's a great anvil to take around to shows and things like that. So far, I've been fairly impressed with this product, um, you know, for what it is and for the price. Also, uh, you can find out all the specs like the dimensions and all that other stuff of the anvil, its height, its width, its length, the size of its hardy hole and pritchel hole. You can find all that information at those links in the description. So if you're wondering that, curious about that, just go check that out. Um, and that way I don't have to sit here and measure all the, all the actual dimensions and bore you with that. So that's it for this video. The next video in the series that you could be expecting and checking out is me actually dressing the anvil for proper professional use um, or just good hobby use for good quality forgings. So that's it for today. God bless you and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.